T'Challa. Hey, what's up, YouTube family? It's Denot. I got big dreams to see the world and do what my heart believes. Everything ain't what it seems, so I'm here to tell you the truth about pop culture, hip-hop, and some of the most toxic shit across the web. Forget Charleston White. I'm the one. Like it or not. Better subscribe to my channel and like this video, because I'm not going to stop. I am T'Challa. I, um, I didn't know how I could email you, but I had some messages. You have messages was, from Mahogany? She was struggling really around Christmas time is when she got arrested for putting her hands on her mom. And that kind of set in motion. My message, I think, was the 23rd. Um, I'm, I've got to go back and check. But Mahogany was hurt, you know, that her mom would actually call the police. Because we live where we live in Jasper, it is kind of the hood of Jasper um, and it's government housing. So once her mother called the police, that's an automatic eviction because it's considered domestic violence. So it kind of set everything in motion. After that, she had to go back to Birmingham. She didn't have anywhere to go. And she was there in Birmingham for three days before that happened. Yeah, it was like three days when they came and got everything, moved the furniture out of the apartment. They haven't, they have, as of now, they hadn't even finished cleaning the apartment out. Miss um, Gail asked me to let them know that uh, it would be after the funeral. Um, you know, of course, she couldn't get that done, but it, it was, it was about three days after they got all the furniture out. So did she grow up in Birmingham and then move to where you are? She did. Um, it, she was down here, I want to say, two years um, because she, you know, she had gotten some trouble up there, um, made some enemies. Um, so her mom, you know, kind of wanted to give her a fresh start down here. Um, now, the mom didn't stay here full time, but like I said, she would come visit bring her daughter down here to see her, you know, spend the weekend, spend a week sometimes. So that's why they felt comfortable filming her getting beat up and unalive because she had moved away and came back. Is that what you're saying? I don't know if that, that's what made them feel comfortable, but I feel like they they felt like nobody was going to really nobody was going to defend her or nobody was going to miss her um i don't think they thought it was going to get as big as it did and it wouldn't have if it wasn't for people like you um other youtubers covering it um i don't think it would have got as big as it did but i feel like like I said, once that happened and she didn't have this apartment, it set all this in motion because you don't have this here in Jasper. You can't stay with your mother because you don't want to follow the rules. She didn't have anywhere to go, anywhere to turn to. If she was starting, I mean, I'm going to say Mahogany was sometimes a handful. Um, I, I, You know, so many times that she got upset with me. I, I didn't argue with her. I gave her a lot of grace because, like I said, she's 20 years old. And, um, you know, I just overlooked a lot of it. She was the kind of person that she would cuss me out one night and then the next morning text me, like, I'm sorry, my bad. You know, I was having a bad night. Uh, she was just one of those people. Um, she wants what she wanted right then. You know how sometimes kids are. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what it was. I mean. Um, her mom, a great person. I mean, a, a really great person. And she she loved mahogany. There's no question. But I feel like she, she didn't know what to do herself, if that makes any sense, because she's tried so many things and put so much time into helping mahogany and trying to set her on the right path. That I, I, I think that she didn't know what to do what else she could do they said yeah they said that um they were drinking lean um and you know she, they had uh, been getting her drunk you know that night but mahogany like i said 
she was so many things. It, it's hard. Like you just had to know her <laughs> to understand that, you know, one day, like I said, she could cuss you out. I mean, cuss you out and the next day apologize and, you know, want to hang out and have fun. Uh, she just wanted, she really wanted to fit in. She wanted to belong somewhere. But she was real clingy. Like, um, if I go to the bathroom or something here, she will follow me to the bathroom. You know, like she was that kind of person. She wanted to feel loved. Um, you know, when some days she would tell me that she wanted to be like her mom. Her mom was her biggest inspiration. And then, uh, you know, a week later she would tell me, oh, you know, she's going to be better than that. You know, uh, like I said, she had kind of started back on a, a, a difficult path, hanging with her own people, getting back into the same routine and pattern. And um, it, it kind of, I guess, set all this in motion. I, um, I couldn't believe it. Um, when Miss Gill texted me, I want to say it was 8 o'clock that Monday morning, she texted me and told me, and I, you know, when I read the message, I thought, oh, my God, maybe she had a car accident, or I had no idea um, until I saw the videos um, that that happened. No idea. I would have never thought. I, I wouldn't even think of somebody being capable of that. Um, and then you see her in the, the videos. She, she's terrified. She's scared to death. She knew. And when she fell on the floor and got up and looked at the camera and her lip was bleeding, you could tell she was scared to death. She was all by herself. No one person in that room stood up for her. Nobody. I just, I, I, I can't even think about her being there alone and scared. <laughs> Everything they did. <laughs> she was a beautiful spirit. <laughs> she was naive in a lot of ways. <laughs> I think that her wanting to fit in clouded her judgment. She so desperately wanted to fit in somewhere. You would just never think. When I walk outside, I still expect to see her sitting out there on the porch. I expect when I get home to see her out there waiting. It. It is, it's, it don't even feel real. I'm sorry. I mean, my kids are crushed. I mean, she would come over and decorate the tree with them, play with them like a child. She became like a, an extension of our family. She didn't have anybody here. I try my best to look out for her, for her mother. Sometimes she would take advice, sometimes she wouldn't. But I have to go. I just wanted to thank you for your commentary. Um, I think you hit the nail right on the head. Um, and all the way around, I think she was kind of failed by everybody in some way. What, what about her sister? Did she ever speak to her sister? She did. She did. She would come over too and stay with her. Now, her family was in the picture, but her mom traveling for work.
for her sister having to watch her daughter. Um, you know, everybody had their own lives, their own things going on. And um, I, it's not, it wasn't her mom or her sister. It wasn't that they didn't love her. Sometimes she made it hard for them to be around her. Because you know, you're 20 years old, you know everything. You feel like you can do anything. And, um, yeah, I, um, I heard everything you said, and um, you were respectful. And I saw a lot of people bashing her mom and her family, but I promise you her mom did everything that she could. It was just a series of events that, that kind of set her back on this on, on the path that she eventually, you know. Where's her father? I never met her dad. She would talk about him and uh, tell me that he was ex-military. You know, tell me that, you know, how successful he was. But I never met him. But she she talked a lot about her father. A lot. She was proud of him, but I never met him. And when you see her messages, you can kind of see the switch in in um uh, in her behavior. Because Are you, like within those three days of her going back to that environment and her being where you are, right? In general, just from how she went to Oh, her mom's her biggest inspiration to I'm going to be better than her. And, you know, you can tell how she started to kind of get off the path. Um, it was it was a switch in her behavior that, you know, I had and I, I feel so bad about it. But I had kind of distanced myself because I told, like I told her mother, you know, the people she's hanging out with, I have kids, I can't, I can't put them in danger, you know, and so I had separated myself, and um, I felt, I, I felt bad about it, um, the last message that she sent me was actually, um, she cussed me out because I didn't open the door, I didn't reply to messages, and um, I thought that I was, I thought it was for her, for her good. You know, I thought if I did that, she would, you know, once she would listen, she would stop hanging out with people that were, you know, and, um, but it, but it did. And now if I could go back, I would have opened the door every time I would have replied to every message I would have, but I was doing what I thought I needed to do for my kids and myself. Because I knew that the crowd that she had got back into was not good. I want to I wanna first off thank you for being human, for treating her with compassion and opening your arms and welcoming her into your environment, whatever that is. I want to thank you for allowing her to uh, be frustrated and express herself to you, no matter how dysfunctional it might have seen. I want to thank you for everything. I want to thank you for the, the empathy that you have for her, the sympathy that you have for the family. I want to thank you for speaking on their behalf. What you just said was so much more impactful than the service that they have for her. I feel like she represents me. She represents most of Black America, those that get on the path to go and experience something different and find themselves being peer pressure, put back in situations because you don't have support of your family. The traditional family is not the same for us anymore. I just want to also say that uh, we, I think we all failed her, uh, myself included, because I think it might have been different. It, it, it might not have, but if I hadn't have separated myself also, knowing that I'm one of the only people down here that she really had, she had friends, you know, but I'm 37. I wasn't her friend. You know what I mean? I, I tried to look out for her. 
you know, I tried to, if she needed something, you know, I'd go get it for her. Um, you know, if she, she one day she wanted her hair, she wanted to wash her hair. She asked me to go get her some vinegar. I go to the store and get vinegar. She texts me. She needs all of a sudden. Now she needs baking soda or something. She needed everything. She didn't have anything she needed. <laughs> so we ended up making four trips to the store. And I, I um, God, I, I, I would give anything to go back and 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 change it if I could because then I felt like when she was here, it made her seem like she didn't have anybody. And I really, I do regret that. And um, I think we all kind of, we all failed. Um, she deserved more support. And if you met her and, and she was with you, she was with you 100%. 100%. Um, <laughs> she, like I said, when she found out that the guy was beating on the girl that he cheated on her with. She confronted him. So um, you talking about Tasia? No, no, it was a girl down here from Jasper that uh <laughs> that she found out was messing with the same guy. And um, <laughs> when she found out that he was putting his hands on that girl that he cheated with, she confronted him and took up for the girl that he was cheating with. Because she was a girl's girl. She was she would not she would not go behind a girl's back for a man. She just wasn't like that at all. I, I wanted to say this, uh, and this is what I want to leave you with. And I'm glad that you came, Eric, because I'm gonna leave you with this. Um Mahogany had a new a nuclear family that was broken. Um, you as someone who did not grow up around her, did not know her, you essentially became her extended family. And sometimes extended family uh, can mean the neighbor that asks you for favors or you ask them for favor. Um, extended family sometimes come and go like seasons, like, like, you know, like the leaves on trees, they just fall off. And that's quite normal. Um, the fact, like I keep, I want to reutter that the fact that you have some sympathy and empathy for the situation um, means a lot and speaks volume. But mahogany wasn't your responsibility. You was an, you, essentially, from what you're telling me, and especially based on what she come from and based on what I've seen, you was a, essentially an angel to her to be a way show or to show her uh, a different type of person that can be her friend and usher her. And I feel like you being 37 and her being 20, don't say that's not your friend. Don't let 17 years uh, uh, let you feel like that's not your friend. That's somebody that you want to look out for and hope that when they get 37 years old, that they would have learned from the lessons you experienced and you come from a different cultural background. This is exactly why a lot of people like Krishan Rock and are interested in her. There's older women like yourself that say, you know what, I see something that you're doing that I've done and I don't want you to go down that path. I want to show you love. I see something that you're liking and I want to fulfill that. But no matter how much you fulfill that, no matter how much her family had a duty to push her forward into the next step of life, I'm pretty sure Mahogany was told that she wasn't going to be nothing, that she was going to be dead or in prison by the time she turned 18 or 21. And that's what she manifested into her life, coming from those that have a celestial connection to her. So I don't want you to feel responsible. And I hope and pray that this conversation heals you. And I want you to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks for letting me on the panel and um, thank you for covering her story. Um, it's so sad. When she got out of jail, she told me she wanted to die. And here we are now. It, she's not here in the most horrific way. But thank you for having me. I thank you and I appreciate you for being here and I'm going to make sure that what you said 
be a part of her official eulogy. Mahogany belongs to us now. Mahogany is a reflection of us and what we do to each other as mothers, as brothers, as sisters, as cousins, as everything. And that's why we are emotionally compelled to talk about this, despite the opposition who wants to report on it. And I appreciate you. You've healed me. And I'm not even mahogany. I'm still here. I still have a chance of changing and growing. No matter where I'm at or where I come from every day, I still got my own problems and struggles to say that I want to change and I want to be better than I was yesterday. He was essentially someone there to show her that she could be that. And nobody else in the proximity to her encouraged her. I feel like that's what I'm lacking too. A lot of us are lacking it. I'm just brave enough to talk about it and you're brave enough to admit it and to see how you was and played a part in someone's growth and development. You was essentially an angel. I'm not saying you're an angel because you probably got some devilish ways, but to mahogany based on what you're saying, this is this is what I would like to have heard from the funeral home the service. Now how she was a burden or how nobody loved her. We left the question how the family feel about her. You've clarified a lot of things for us and now we got to work on us. Um, this is definitely heartbreaking. I felt honestly her coming to speak about mahogany and me having three siblings that passed away and still seeing my family be stuck in the same cycle, let me know that they're not going to give a shit about me if I die. And it's unfortunate that we come from these environments. We got to build upon that. We got to say, what, what what's your mark going to be when you leave from here? This is why I went to Hollywood. I was like, my family don't give a shit if something happened to me. They're never going to love me, never going to give me the type of love that I want, that I respect, that I desire. Mahogany the same way. We just heard Jessica say, when she's with you, she's with you. When I'm with you, I'm with you. And anything that you do could hurt me. It could put me in danger because you're never going to be with me the way that I'm with you. And it's unfortunate. Sometimes I even have PTSD when I find somebody that could be with me all the way, like how Jessica proclaimed she is what she was with Mahogany. You miss those opportunities and you can't see the good in it because you're so traumatized by how dysfunctional your family dynamic is, where you're supposed to learn, nurture, and grow how to network with people, how to love people, how to be loved and loved. She didn't know, she didn't have love. Her mom tried the best. We see that story all the time. The innocent one. We we read in the newspaper how how a principal, a female principal, her husband was raping kids that belonged to her school. We seen those stories. We seen the wicked Negro that says I'm so innocent and I'm not gonna do anything. Jessica, send me those messages, cause I understand us how you don't understand us, and I promise you we're gonna get to the bottom of these wicked Negroes, these generational curses. You got a daughter that wanna be like you and send you a whole essay and tell you how much she loved you after you put her in jail. You don't even respond to that. And now she's so angry that you don't don't, don't support her. She says she's going to be better than you. She's going to be better than you because you're using her kid for a DCF check, a foster kid check, and you got your daughter out there struggling, having to work to maintain her apartment, but also you got her own child support. I'm pretty sure that's what type of mother she had. We got to look at us. I ain't beautiful for no reason. I come from the ugliest of the ugliest. And I told them they would never be able to break me. And that's why I look as good as I do. I appreciate the people for being here, for listening to this testimony. Mahogany wasn't even in Birmingham for two years. And then she went back. Remember when I told y'all how I escaped? When I graduated high school, I didn't go back until years later. And I still knew they wanted to unalive me. So every time they see me, I was around some of my family that I trusted. Not all of my family, just the family that I trusted. You will never get the opportunity to do some shit like that to me. Mahogany went back into the lion's den. The like blue was right there ready to clout chase, to act significant, to act like you better than, you cool with these girls. You got to see every day. You ain't seen Mahogany. You knew what was going on. You gang gang. You was one of the 40 people in that group text. Vito, all he want to do is clout chase and break news and break stories and grift off Never giving back to the family. It's a shame how he stopped Carly Russell, daddy and mama and all of them. Did the same thing to Mahogany. And we wonder why the funeral home looked so ice cold. People was there like they had to be there. People that ain't never stepped in the church house. 
That's why they had that Easter Sunday outfits on pink in the church house for this funeral. And your sister looked like a you don't care. You're not crying because your sister's gone. You don't miss her. It's a performance for you. All y'all. Oh, when the mother went up there, I understood the three guys had to stand behind her. I seen this shit three times. My mother lost my mother. Like I got siblings from my mother's side and my daddy's side. My I don't even, my mother lost three kids. And she still act like she don't care. From Alabama. We got to break these generational curses. We got to. I had to detach myself from my family dynamic in order to move forward. Came to Hollywood. I was a crybaby. Oh, I got to make it. I got to make it. I got to get my mama and my family out the hood. You want shit working out for me because I'm focused on helping and improving and living for other niggas that don't give a about themselves. How much money you got? I'm talking about the mentality. Thank you. I knew for a fact that Mahogany family didn't give a fuck about her. How did shit happen? I'm like, how the fuck does anybody from the neighborhood even get the fucking imagination that it's okay to violate someone like this? I see every one of my siblings beg my mother for validation. Beg my mother for something. She didn't give a fuck about them. My first sibling that died, she was living in efficiency with her two kids, begging my mama to help her when my mama had money. My mama ain't give us. She thought, let me take my last bit of money and go to the casino. Maybe I can hit a jackpot. Died on the way. My mom at the funeral, no emotion, no remorse. They kicked her kids out of her house before they even turned 18. I pray for all of my nieces and nephews. I pray that I'm in a position where I can help them help themselves because don't nobody give a fuck about them. I'm the only person in my family that give a fuck about somebody. Last person in my family committed suicide because her mother didn't give a fuck about her. Got her mother sitting there gossiping about her in the neighborhood and she didn't give a about her, so she commit, committed suicide just to get away. My sister, both of my sisters, begged my mom for validation, begged my mom to do right by them and their kids, begged her to be the grandparent, the mother, like, and me, I'm like, I don't give a fuck about this shit. I'm out in the world. I ain't feel let her hold me back. It's my duty to love and care about you. That's it. I don't have to. I'm doing it because of duty. And there's so many of us, so many of us, and then we go into this year century standard of living and be around white people. We got a code switch and we got to act like we didn't come from whatever we came from. We're embarrassed, not because we conquered the ghetto, because we're embarrassed because we conquered the ghetto without family support, without nobody to support us. Nobody to tell you thank you or congratulations. That's taboo. They don't know how to do that. And even if they do it, it's not genuine. I knew Mahogany came from one of the backgrounds. I knew it. 